Number 50, Final Fantasy Crisis Core. This is the story prequel to the original Final Fantasy VII. It stars Zack Fair back in his soldier days with Cloud Strife and even Sephiroth, exclusive to the PSP but soon to be remade for modern systems. However, this is an action RPG. Right around the time Square Enix wanted Final Fantasy to forget about its turn-based origins, sadly, nevertheless, it's still quite a fun game to play. Number 49, Ys Chronicles. A remake of the original Ys 1 and 2 that came out in the 80s, revolutionary RPGs and the start of Falcom's legendary franchise. These two are most likely remakes of another remake though, one on the TurboGrafx-16. I personally believe these are the best versions to play of those two games, one a direct sequel to the other and with a mind-blowing music arrangement. Number 48, The Legend of Heroes A Tear of Vermilion. So there's three games in what is known as the Gagarv trilogy, unrelated to the popular Trails series. Vermilion is the second one, even though it was localized first. All were released on PC and PS1 in the 90s, only in Japan, so these are pretty much the remade versions of them all. In Vermilion, you play as Alvin in a quest to exact revenge on the evil douchebag that raided the chapel where he and his sister lived peacefully. This is a turn-based RPG, kind of like the Lunar series where you select an action and the character moves around to perform it. It's also the first game, chronologically speaking, of the trilogy, so you'll be fine playing this one first. The other two games are decent too, but like I said, this one is the best. Number 47, Summon Knight 5. The first main Summon Knight game to be released outside Japan. All thanks to Gaijin Works, a company formed by ex-employees of Working Designs. This mixes a slice-of-life adventure about an organization that protects people and fights demons, and you play as either a male or female summoner, each with a preset personality on a grid-based strategy RPG. Pretty simple game for beginners, an interesting hidden gem on the system. Number 46, Fantasy Star Portable. The third entry in the Universe Saga, a direct sequel to the games we saw on both the PS2 and the Xbox 360. This one lets you choose and customize your main character, just like in its predecessor. While the story follows its own curse with a different conflict, it still continues the one in the previous game, with several characters returning as party members with plot-wise related events. This is one of the best action RPGs on the PSP. Number 45, Tactics Ogre. A remake of the influential tactical RPG on the Super Famicom. It was now handled by Square Enix after acquiring Quest Corporation, a job-based video game with a mature story, quite challenging, and with multiple routes and endings. A remaster of this remake was released a few weeks ago for modern consoles. Number 44, Tales of the World. This is the first of three crossover spin-offs from the Tales series, although we only got this one. It's played in a quest-driven format, some characters across the series will join your customizable protagonist, you can take them on different side or story quests. Kinda repetitive, but if you're a big fan of the Tales games, then you'll probably enjoy it like I did. Number 43, Black Rock Shooter. This is based on an OVA, a long anime episode with characters created by Ryohei Fuke. It gained a lot of popularity in Japan and quickly became its own media franchise. This hybrid RPG that combines turn-based with real-time shooting action came out exclusively for the PSP. You don't need to watch anything else to understand it as the story, while still based on the girl, the Black Rock Shooter, is standalone. She's the ace weapon of the few surviving soldiers in a post-apocalyptic setting. This is quite an interesting video game, not too many are familiar with it. Number 42, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Apparently this is the prequel to the entire long-ass Kingdom Hearts series. No Sora or Roxas here, you control three different guys this time, who also go into the Disney territory. I found this one more fun than other spin-offs actually, which is why despite not being a fan, I decided to include it in this video. Number 41, Final Fantasy IV. 
There's tons of Final Fantasy ports on the PSP, but I wanted to pick only the best ones. All of them are good though, such as the first two Final Fantasy games. 4 is special because it includes a direct sequel called The After Years, where you play as the kids of the main characters. It isn't that good though, but it's okay, a nice addition to what I believe might be the definitive version of this game to play. Number 40. Gognir. This strategy RPG is part of the Department Heaven series created by hardcore developer Sting Entertainment. It's mostly based on class-like characters in a system that's heavily affected by terrains. It's quite a difficult game to get used to, so I only recommend this one for very experienced tactical lovers. And while the characters look chibi and may appear silly in design, the story is quite actually serious and often mature. Another highly unique game here. Number 39 is the Odin Felgana. The second is remake on the PSP, this one a fully reimagined one of the third game. Original versions were side-scrolling action RPGs, Felgana became a 3D fast-paced excitement. It's a phenomenal short adventure, once again with badass music rearrangements, this time by Yukihiro Jindo. It's not an exclusive for the PSP though, you can also find this awesome game on Windows. Number 38, Popolo Kuroi's. Initially, these was two games released only in Japan for the PlayStation. More sequels came about that also remained in their country of origin. But this PSP version is a re-edited and pretty much a reimagined version of the first two games. The result was a turn-based RPG that allows characters to move on grids to strategize a tiny bit against their enemies. Lovely story and music accompany this magical adventure, quite the overlooked gem. Number 37, Hexis Force. I've covered this game recently and multiple times on my channel, so you already know it's a turn-based RPG with a dual protagonist feature, each with their own separate story and part in the overall plot. It's a turn-based RPG with a small twist in formation and elemental structure. This is one of my personal favorites on the PSP. Number 36, Valkyria Chronicles 2. This sequel might have been a disappointment for fans since it was exclusive on the PSP, with a light-hearted plot and with a military school simulator that felt more like a high school simulator. However, I still think it's a really good game, despite not surpassing its masterful predecessor. Battles are still very fun and strategic and the story does take its dark twists and turns here and there. Definitely give it a chance if you can. Number 35, Mimana ER Chronicle. I know this one should be in the worst PSP JRPG list, but I would never put it there. I love it. It's a guilty pleasure of mine, and I don't care. One of the funniest and most charming comedies I've played in my life. Grace is hired by Sophie as a bodyguard so she can safely collect seven gems in dangerous areas. Grace is an unlucky and impatient jerk, hence why it's such a funny story. Other silly characters increase the number of good laughs here. I know it's a poor man's tail off with lame controls and heat detection, but if I got used to them, I know you will too. Number 34, Ragnarok Tactics. This is one of the best JRPGs on the PSP in my opinion. Another strategy RPG I've covered to death my channel as I'm a huge fan of it. One of those with multiple routes and endings and with a customizable protagonist, it's also an excellent game for beginners into the tactical fields of the genre, as it isn't too hard or too easy, quite balanced, with great storytelling and a fantastic character design. Number 33, Monster Hunter Freedom. I'm no fan of the series, but there's three of them here and this is the only one I'll cover. It's a port of the enhanced PS2 version that spearheaded the franchise. You know the drill, you create a character, take on quests, hunt down big monsters, etc. Yeah, a very influential game. Number 32, Generation of Chaos. This is a very unique strategy RPG inspired by Dragon Force on the Sega Saturn. You basically control one of different protagonists in charge of an army. In the middle of a war, the goal will be to capture enemy bases and destroy the opposing enemies in maps. It's not for everybody to be honest, but upon understanding its complex mechanics, it can become a very interesting JRPG to play.
Number 31, Gikandia the Timeless Land. One of the dumbest and silliest action RPGs ever, completely in 2D, almost as if it was an indie game. It's very short, but very fun. You have a time limit to complete randomly generated areas and defeat a boss at the end. Your party members will fight by themselves and they can be very helpful in progressing faster. This game didn't win any awards or anything and it's a small hidden gem on the PSP. You won't play it for hours straight, but it's fun, give it a chance, it's a good time. Number 30, Gudumin. Gudumin is another good time but more fleshed out. Developed by Nihon Falcom, it's an action RPG for kids. You control Parin in a quest to help the hidden monsters from the threat of other evil monsters. Apparently only children can see these monsters, and since Parin can fight with a legendary drill, she's the only one up to the task. Basically, you'll have a small town as your base of operations and go inside dungeons and areas to fight monsters and defeat the bosses. Your abilities might change depending on the outfit you have equipped, adding more variety to the gameplay. This is a fun game, it's also on PC and the 3DS. Number 29, Yggdry Union. This is also part of the Department Heaven series, same as Gungnir, but every story is standalone and different even in gameplay mechanics. I've covered this game several times before and explained its system in detail, because there's so much to tell. Basically, it's a war campaign by Princess Yggdra and a group of mercenaries trying to take her kingdom back. Battles are played on grids, but each character is a commander of a group of soldiers who will fight based on cards with different stats, but also with a morale bar during combat. This is one of the most unique JRPGs in existence. Too bad we never got any of its sequels. Number 28, Star Ocean First Departure. This is a remake of the very first Star Ocean game on the Super Famicom. It started the nowadays well-established formula of future human space travelers arriving in an underdeveloped planet that's still medieval, except the protagonists are two childhood friends who live on that planet. Yeah, it's a great game and a solid historical start for such a legendary franchise. Number 27, White Knight Chronicles Origins. Well, this game never came to the US. It did get physical and digital versions in Europe and Japan. It's the prequel to the PS3 games, taking place a thousand years before. The game's heavily quest-driven as you control a customizable protagonist that joins a mercenary group. You'll be sent with party members to different missions, most of them in dungeons. The goal will be the same in the majority of them, then fight a boss, transform into Power Ranger-like creatures and return to base. It's repetitive alright, but it's good enough to keep you entertained. Number 26, Persona 2 Innocent Sin. Since the original Innocent Sin remained in Japan's PS1, we never got it until this enhanced port. With the ability of summoning demons known as Personas, a group of high school students chase after the mysterious evil Joker. Everything seems to be connected to the main character Tatsuya. This is the first of the Persona 2 duology necessary to understand the popular Eternal Punishment, solid turn based RPG with incredible music. Number 25 is Six The Ark of Napishtim. First released on PC back in 2003, Napishtim is yet another one of Adol Christian's adventures after being found unconscious in a beach. His goal, as mostly always, will be to find his way out of there, but not before getting involved with the problems of the villagers. The entire game is played on 3D with a slightly larger model for Adol in the fast paced combat we know very well from the series. Another great entry. Number 24, Mystic Chronicles. This is one of the earliest JRPGs published by Chemco that are love letters to 8 and 16 bit classics. It's digital only for the PSP, Vita, and iOS. A young fighter named Lox sees his village decimated with his best friend probably involved in it. Off he goes in a journey to find his friend and protect what's left from evil threats. It's a turn based RPG that revolves around summon creatures characters can equip during battle. They will fight alongside the player in menu based systems, so it's kind of generic but in a good sense. Honestly, this is one of the best Chemco RPGs out there. Number 23, Grow Lancer 4. 
first release on the PS2 exclusive to Japan, a definitive version was then published on the PSP. And that's the one we thankfully got. A brutally hard and unbalanced real-time strategy RPG, but one that's surprisingly unique and addictive to play. It's about Crevenil, he and his mercenary friends join the military to fight the angels who want to wipe out humanity. Several routes and endings are present here, great storytelling, intuitive combat, traditional gameplay, definitely one of the best JRPGs on the system. Number 22, this Gaia Afternoon of Darkness. No, it's not a different game from the PS2 original, it's simply an enhanced port of it. But one that also includes an Edna mode, with her as the main character and Laharl pretty much dead. It's a different take on the funny and comedic story that threw this Gaia into commercial success. Number 21, Half Minute Hero. This underrated little action RPG was also released on PC, it contains a bunch of small real-time strategy games, but the main adventure is simply action. Action out of the direct control of the player during battle. We can do the rest as long as we complete the mission in 30 seconds, bringing down the several evil lords across the world. Anyway, it's a very addictive game to play, strongly recommend it. Number 20, Lord of Arcana. Lore of Arcana is a quest-driven hardcore RPG. Your customizable character will take on different quests to take down a powerful monster. It's repetitive but very, very challenging. It also has an incredible soundtrack by the likes of Nobuo Uematsu and Kenichiro Fukui. Number 29, Blazing Souls. Released also on PS2 and the 360, we only got its PSP version. It's a strategy RPG that plays on grids but based on creating combination attacks by one or several characters. It's all about the positions you have them take to execute these attacks, limited by an action points bar. It's original and fun but also really challenging. You play as Cellos, a freelance mercenary now involved in the aftermath of a racial war. It takes place 20 years after the true ending of another strategy RPG that we'll get to in a bit. Number 18, Final Fantasy Tactics. An enhanced port of the classic PS1 game, perhaps its definitive version to play. Not much I can say about one of the most popular JRPGs on the PSP, a highly influential video game that got two sequels and then simply disappeared. Who knows, maybe Square Enix will one day remake it just like it recently did with its Godfather Tactics Ogre. Number 17, Riviera the Promised Land. I forgot to say that E Dryunion was originally released on the Game Boy Advance. Its PSP version is an enhanced port, just like Riviera. Yes, I know, too many ports and remakes in this video, but in JRPGs, that's what the PSP was mostly known for. Riviera is also a part of the Department Heaven series. Ayn is a Grim Angel in a quest to stop demons and even other Grim Angels from unsealing evil beings known as the Accursed. However, there's also a small dating simulation with the female heroines, and therefore different routes and endings are available. Exploration is menu-based and battles will occur depending on the room you visit. Combat is based on the limited amount of items you equip before it, and every character may do different attacks or actions with them. It's quite original and therefore quite challenging. Number 16, Fantasy Star Portable 2. The fourth and last game in the universe saga. It got a definitive version called Infinite later on that stayed in Japan. Several years after the events of the first three games, once again we customize a protagonist or we can import our previous one. But now you belong to a different and smaller organization with a really annoying partner called Amelia. Refined battle and controls are there, but it's not that big of a difference. I still think this is a great action RPG, but honestly it's the worst in the saga. Number 15, Manakemia. Yep, you guessed it, another port. Original release was on the PS2, part of the Atelier series, but nowhere near as known as most of them. 
However, this kinda simulates a magic academy where your characters are students learning to become full-fledged alchemists, so you'll be thrown into story quests to gather items, synthesize them and create better accessories to your characters, all in order to perform better in this awesome battle system, where you can even switch to other party members to create cool combos. Very decent port here. Number 14, Generation of Chaos Pandora's Reflection. This is a real-time strategy RPG. It's a post-apocalyptic setting where the alchemist Kalav is trying to find a cure for his sister. Both travel the land and will have to fight in a political conflict for power. The entirety of its gameplay revolves around these small maps. Here you will control a few of your characters, giving them directions to move towards bases to capture them or enemies to fight. A brief battle will occur upon contact where you'll need to press the correct buttons to execute your attacks. I love this combat and this game, too bad it's only digital exclusive to the PSP. Number 13, Ease 7. After a few years of ports and remakes, Falcom finally decided to release their seventh game, the very first one where Adol had party members and players could control any of them. Switching between the three active characters was mandatory because of the triangle attack system. One type of character is stronger against one type of enemy and so on. This is a fantastic game, the best action RPG on the PSP. Oh yeah! Number 12, Breath of Fire 3. This PSP version remained exclusive to Japan and Europe for a long time, until 2016 when Capcom finally released it to the PlayStation Network in North America. Wow, what took you so damn long, Capcom? Well, at least finally players could play the adventures of Ryu as a little kid, teenager and adult in the legendary Breath of Fire 3 on the PSP. Number 11, Disgaea 2. You know, the first Disgaea wasn't the only one to receive an enhanced port treatment. The sequel, which is one of my favorites, came over here too. Honestly, I think this is a much friendlier game than its super grindy predecessor, still quite challenging but way more balanced. Number 10, Brave Story. This is the sequel to a book with the same name, taking place in the same world. Obviously with different characters and plot, your MC is a guy who wants to save his love interest from a terminal disease, he's given the option to travel to a magical medieval world to find it. All sorts of adventures will ensue from there in a turn-based RPG with simple mechanics and traditional gameplay, one of the better hidden gems on the PSP. Number 9, Jean d'Arc. A grid-based tactical RPG which retells the story of Joan of Arc in its anime incarnation. That obviously means it mixes demons and dark fantasy, but the narrative is told in a series, no BS tune. This is a phenomenal game I've recommended to exhaustion in this channel. Definitely give it a try. Number 8, Fate Extra. We ain't done with overly recommended RPGs here, part of the Fate universe but stand alone from others. A tournament begins to win the Holy Grail inside a high school. Your male or female protagonist will have to train one of the three warriors available in a really unique battle system, a guessing game with a rock-paper-scissors mechanic. Very clever story here and one of the best on the system, and you already know I'm a big fan of this game, I can't wait for its remake next year. Number 7, Star Ocean 2. Since first departure was successful, Trius and Square Enix thought it would be a good idea to port the second story to the PSP. With redrawn characters and slightly upscaled visuals, but overall it's the same amazing game we saw on the PS1. Either version is strongly recommended, it's perhaps the best Star Ocean game out there. Number 6, Tales of Eternia. This port of what was mistakenly localized as Tales of Destiny 2 took back its original game, but it never came to North America. Thankfully, the PSP is region free, which means you can get your hands on the PAL version and play it in English, no problem. In fact, I think it's the best version to play of this underrated action RPG.
Number 5. Valkyrie Profile Let's finish this top 50 with 5 more ports, oh yeah, it kinda gives the name of the system an even deeper meaning, huh? The PlayStation Portable, yeah. Anyway, this one is based on the Japanese PS1 version, retranslated and re-edited, adding some beautiful CGI cutscenes. Other than that, it's the exact same masterpiece as before. Number 4. Spectral Souls Barely anyone knows this is a sequel to a PS2 game that never left Japan. When I first played it, I noticed a lot of characters knew each other from a previous adventure, or war, should I say, as this is the start of the racial conflict that ended 20 years before Blazing Souls. Similar gameplay mechanics and combat here, though I like this game way more than Blazing. This is a huge grind fest, so be ready to spend hours just leveling up in this amazing game with three different protagonists, each with their different route. It also has multiple endings. Number 3. Lunar Silver Star Harmony Not a port, not a remaster, but a full remake of the Sega CD and PS1 game. One of the JRPGs that has been remade the most in history. It's my favorite version of it because it rebounds the gameplay, looks beautiful and added a cool playable prologue with the cactus from the legend they tell often in the story. This is an excellent turn-based RPG, I'm angry the second game didn't get the same treatment. Number 2. Persona 3 So, this is the port that's getting remastered soon, the one where you can finally control your party members, but also the one with the butchered interface during town exploration. But also the one with the option to pick a female protagonist, but also the one with Natchez Kidding, it's still a masterpiece. Number 1. Trails in the Sky 1 and 2 Finally, I'm giving the first place to this long game cut into two parts, even though this list is in random order. One with a physical release, the other only digital. Both games are also on Steam. Japan got some PS Vita remasters. Damn them! What most people don't know is that these were originally released on PC many years ago. So these PSP versions, you guessed it, are also ports. All hail the PSP, father of ports galore way before the PS4 and Switch.